I'm sure you're all familiar by now, and I see the comments on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, everywhere, where people like to laugh at me. <laughs> and it's okay, I have no issue with that. And the funny thing that I see, or I find quite funny anyway, when people say, this guy doesn't count calories. This guy doesn't believe calories are real. And guess what, guys? I 100% stand by that, and I'm gonna tell you again another reason why. Another thing happened to me the other day, which I'm gonna explain to you, on why calorie counting and calories in general, yes, across the board, are BS. So the other day, I had to go to the Chinese embassy in Bangkok. I live in Pattaya, which is around about a two hour drive from to Bangkok. And if you've ever been to Bangkok, the traffic is horrendous. And there's just so much that happens when you're trying to get to one place that you can never time it right. Now there's a video, uh, a blog coming soon about my Bangkok visa application to China. Basically, I didn't do the visa in the UK. I messed up and I had to do it in China. Sorry, I had to do it in Bangkok to go to China. Otherwise, I would have done it in the UK. I think it would have been a little bit easier, but I've still heard this a little bit of a mess about. Anyway, fast forward, we're here. And I had to do my visa application. So I hired a car, got into Bangkok. Now, you always have these things planned. You think, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get my visa application sorted. I'm gonna go for a meal here. I'm gonna get changed. I'm gonna go to the Marriott. I'm gonna go for a meal. I'm gonna go in the evening. I'm gonna go to the rooftop bar. I'm gonna meet a couple of friends, have a few drinks, come back, drive back in the evening. And nothing goes to plan. <laughs> That's just the way it is, Bangkok. It's just the way it is. I've always said this, like if you're out in another country somewhere and you have all these things planned, just pick one. Just pick one thing to do that day. And chances are, you might not even get that one thing done. And it's very the same in Pakistan, because in Pakistan, another thing as well, just to go off you know, topic a little bit, we're not talking about calories. But in Pakistan, you have all these things, you need to go to the bank, you need to go get some shopping done, you need some clothes, you need to get some groceries, you need to get some you know, shower gel, whatever. And then you need to go to the pharmacy, pick up some stuff, some TRT, some steroids, and then you need to get yourself home and none of that happens. You tend to just go out, eat, and before you know it, your day's gone. That's what it's like living in Asia. It's very slow, but fast paced. Anyway, so I hope you guys understand the thing I'm trying to get out. Things were pretty rushed. Things were all over the place. There was a few of us that went. Eventually we got to the mall after the visa application, which took three and a half hours. Yes, I had to queue like a peasant. There was no way I could pay somebody to jump the queue that time. It is what it is. These things happen. And guess what? Just, as fate has it, the next morning, literally the next morning, I met somebody and she said, oh, guess what? I actually know someone at the Chinese embassy and next time you're gonna go get a visa, let me know, we can get you pushed through, pushed through a little bit quicker. And she's actually a YouTuber as well. Uh, I'm not gonna mention her name, but she's a Thai YouTuber with a million subs. And we were on a mastermind, mastermind, yeah, it's called a mastermind course together. We both got invited. I'm a new YouTuber, but I wanted to learn. And the guy who holds the mastermind here in Thailand, he's become a very close friend of mine and um, I've learned loads off him. Anyway, it's weird how life works out sometimes. So picture this, I'm in Bangkok. My whole day's been wasted trying to get this application sorted. And there's a few of us and we're like, do you know what, let's go and sit down and have a meal at least. We're not gonna be able to make it to the Marriott, which is like a decent buffet. Let's just eat at the mall. So we got to the mall, sat down, literally got seated in one place and we said we want this we want this we want this and you just point over there because you don't know what the dishes are called and the lady was like we've run out we've run out and we've run out <laughs> great so the things we wanted to eat were not available okay no problem no problem we'll go somewhere else it's late now it's getting late got to the other place can we can we get the all you can eat buffet nope unavailable okay we'll sit down for the menu looked at the menu and thought this isn't happening. You know, there's nothing on there we like, but we'll just wait, it's late now anyway. If we move now, everywhere's gonna be shut. And nobody was coming over to serve us. Nobody was coming over to serve us. It is just one of those days. So we just got a little bit annoyed and we thought, let's just go to the trusted KFC. I know, I hate KFC, I hate McDonald's, but it's one of those days. Got to KFC, greasy, fried chicken, nasty, 
you eat a wing, you bite it, you put it in the box, you have a strip, you bite it, you think, yeah, that's not nice, put it in the box. You, you squirt the ketchup out, it doesn't look like ketchup, you think, ah, it is what it is. And sometimes when I have food like that, I'll just pick up one or two things, I'll have the chips, and I don't eat for the sake of it. So I'm not one of those people who's like, I'm hungry, therefore I should eat. I will literally have a little bite, and it's not just to satisfy my hunger, because I don't get satisfied. I'm not one of those people. I've programmed myself. I've trained my mind and my body over the years to never feel hunger, ever. I'll just tell you a little side story, actually. I was with Connor Murphy the other day. I'm sure he's a, you guys are well aware. If you follow me, you know him. He's a famous YouTuber. He was the guy who takes his top off, a bit of a pickup artist kind of guy. Two million subscribers on YouTube. Very nice guy. He was also at The Mastermind. And he actually did a 40-day fast without food. I'm going to actually find it and watch it. It'll be an interesting watch. But I was, you know, speaking to the guy. Very intelligent guy. Very nice guy. And, uh, you know, quite a big celebrity in the YouTube space. So, anyway, the reason why I mentioned him was I'm just explaining to you that he's someone who's actually been without food for 40 days. So he told me, and I believe him. And, I, and we actually went to the Hilton buffet the other day. And he didn't eat. He was the only person who sat down and said, I'm actually fasting today. I'm doing a 48 hour fast and I'm not eating 40 hours. So the point is, guys like him, guys like me, we can go without food. We don't need it. And he's also a muscular guy as well. He's not skinny. You know, he's a tall kid, but he's not skinny. So when I'm eating KFC, I'm trying to taste something if I enjoy the food. If I don't enjoy it, I'm just going to put it down. Put it down. And that's how I did it. But I got one of those box meals. So you get a burger, you bite the burger, and you think, yeah, not into the leg meat. We prefer chicken breast from the UK. Chuck that back in. The wrap, now nah, I didn't have, just had a bite of the wrap, had a bit of the wing, and had a bit of the strip, and just ate the chips. Waste of a meal, but it is what it is. These things just happen. So then we went around, and we just chilled out. We went out onto Kosan Road, had a little chill, whatever, whatever. You know how it goes. I'm not going to say what we got up to in Bangkok. And it was late at night, and we thought, let's drive back to Pattaya. There's no point stopping here because we only have to get up in the morning, and we've got the car. We might as well drive back. And I was driving. So I've got a nice 4x4, a big Ford Everest, I think it was called, something like that. If you're from the UK, we don't have those kind of cars in the UK, but if you're American, you probably know what I mean. So I got the car, headed back to Pattaya, got into Pattaya, and at that point now... My stomach was just feeling a little bit uneasy. I was feeling like a bit low on energy, a little bit drained, a little bit tired. And yeah, you might think, okay, he's been in Bangkok all day. He's probably lethargic. He's probably, you know, got up early and all this kind of stuff. That's actually not it. It was the chemicals in that food that were making me tired. And I'm going to explain how I know this later. On the way back, we got to Pattaya. It was early morning, three o'clock in the morning. Guess what was open? McDonald's. So we thought, oh my God, already been KFC today. Gonna have to have McDonald's. <laughs> the lads wanted it. I got peer pressured into having McDonald's. I thought, I wanted a Subway personally, but I thought, you know what? Forget it. It is what it is. Let's just go. Went to McDonald's. I got a fillet of fish, burger, double. Got some fries, got some ice cream, and got my iced tea. That's what I normally get from McDonald's. Anyway, I sat down and ate the food. And I'll tell you something about McDonald's food when you eat it. It makes you feel like shit. Same with KFC, same with Burger King, and same with a lot of these fast food joints. And the reason for that is this. It is not real food. Now, I know I don't want to get into the science about it with anyone, but I'm telling you now, guys, this stuff is chemicalized, chemically manufactured for you to consume, like a lot of things on the market nowadays. When you go to McDonald's website, and I've done this, you put in the nutritional information for a fillet of fish, it'll tell you it has 15 grams of protein per cake, per uh, piece of fish. So in my burger, there was 30 grams or 40 grams of protein, whatever. Now, here's my question, not question, but here's my dig at the calorie counters out there. You people out there who count calories will believe that you've just consumed 30 grams of protein because that's what it says on the box. You think you've consumed 120 grams of carbohydrates because that's what it says on the box. You think you've consumed however many fats as well and however much salt. But I'm telling you this right now. My body is such a well-oiled machine. When that McDonald's came in, that KFC came in, it looked at it, it did its scan and it thought, 
it thought, this is absolute garbage. I'll tell you what we'll do with this. We're not gonna absorb any nutrients. We're not gonna break down any of the food. All we're gonna do is just churn it up so it can be passed through his ass. That is it. It came straight out the other end. It wasn't a runny one. It was a standard, normal shit. It stank a little bit more than usual, but that's about it. And the reason for that, there's no protein in McDonald's. I don't care what it says on the tin, bro. There's no fiber in McDonald's. There's no carbs in McDonald's. There's nothing but chemical bullshit in McDonald's. So brings me back to the start of the video. Does anybody want to argue with me again about calories? Does anybody want to sit there and say to me, Fanny, if how can you go against when they say is four calories per carbohydrates? You're going to tell me that the protein, carbs, and fats in McDonald's is exactly the same if it was something else. And I know those calories, even the calorie counting bums, the calorie counting slaves, even they agree that all calories aren't the same. Even they agree that much that a protein source from this is different from protein source from that, but they still count the calorie. They still think that works. Your body does not count calories. I'm gonna say it until I get right to the top and people will call me stupid or people will follow me and I'll tell you this now. It's absolute garbage. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna keep on saying this. I'm not afraid to speak to anybody. I'll line the best scientists up and by the time me and him finish that conversation, he's gonna say, Fadi, actually, do you know what? You have a point. Because I know how science works. I know the theory. I know the test that they're looking for. And I'm telling you this now, and I'll tell you, I've said it before and I'll say it again. There is no way on earth for them to measure energy from chemicalized protein, from a peanut, what's carbs, what's fats, and what's carb and what's uh, protein from a peanut. They don't know the different measurement of energy. And still, I'm waiting for somebody to show me the evidence. Google it, bro. Google whatever you want. How does that emulate how our stomachs work? Our stomach does not freeze dry something and then burn it, and then the water around it heats up the temperature. Energy. Our stomachs do not work like that. And what about the chemicalized protein? What happens to that? I'll tell you what happens to it with me and people that follow my diet. Your body gets so optimal with its digestion, when there's a foreign body being passed through it, it shits it straight out. Now, if you follow my diet, you know on every single phase that I do, the seven phases of fat life that I have, I always include a cheat meal. And the cheat meal is what for? I'll tell you explain what the cheat meal is for because unfortunately, we live in a society where food is held at a high regard. We have a function, birthday, wedding, whatever it is, any party, we're going for a meal. If we wanna have a get together, we can't just have a get together without a meal. And I'm not here to change the get togethers. I'm not here to do anything. All I'm trying to say is have the meal, enjoy company of other people, but have it on a day where you're gonna have a cheat meal or a cheat day. Enjoy yourself. If you like to eat those foods, enjoy it. And guess who else does me? I'm not a robot, bro. I like to have a Ferrero Rocher. I like to have ice cream. I like to have a burger. I like to have fried chicken. Not from KFC though. I like to eat these things and I do it and I include it into my clients' diets as well. But the point I'm trying to say is when you eat that garbage on a weekend, for me it's a Sunday night or a whole day Sunday, I will almost guarantee you my body does not process it. My body shits it out straight out the other end without absorbing any bullshit from it. I'm living proof. My clients are living proof. You might eat that shit, you might inflame your gut a little bit for 12 hours while your body's working out what this shit is. But because we're not eating shit all week, by the time we shit it out, it's done. It's dusted. 12 hours in and out, boom. Body was like, we got, we, we cleaned up. Clean up on aisle three. Done. New clients are coming through. New customers are coming through, bro. Clean that shit up. So, just to finish this video, I'll say it again. Calories are BS. They do not work. Stop counting them. And if you want to be a calorie counting slave, so be it. If you want to be freed from eating out of tubs, from not counting calories, from not thinking I've missed a meal, I better catch up on a meal, I, I'm going hungry, some, I'm going catabolic, I better get BCAs, I better get creatine, I better get glutamine. 
you want to get out from that bullshit circle, click the link below. The link is in the description. Get on my coaching package and let me save you. And as always, guys, comment down below. <laughs> let me hear your theories on calories. I know there's going to be someone crying, call me out. Come at me, bro. I told you before, line them up. Derek, more plates, more fakes. Dr. Buberman, whatever they are. I don't care. PhD in front of you, behind, or in the middle of the name. Don't give a shit. Line them up. Let's debate calories. Comment down below and please subscribe.